Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're doing a weapon mastery of the U100 MK5. On my journey to get 500 kills with this gun, I will be discussing some of the pros and cons of this weapon and how to outfit it, and perhaps some of the tactics and situations you should use it for. Now, I'll admit I had to dust the cobwebs off of the old U100 because I haven't really touched this gun since the game really came out. Used it for as long as I had to with the support class and then pretty much moved on to any other machine gun because at first glance they all seem pretty much better than the U100. This gun has an incredibly low rate of fire, 590 rounds per minute, which easily makes it the lowest damage per second machine gun available in the entire game. So as soon as you get any other machine gun, you're pretty much happy to be doing any more damage than the U100 does. The thing is, is that the U100 has incredibly low recoil. In fact, the real life variant of this weapon has a very impressive recoil reduction system, making it incredibly easy to fire around after round after round with this gun and not feeling like you're having to really struggle to control your aim or the shots. So where does it put it in Battlefield 4 in terms of recoil? Well it does technically have the lowest sustained rate of fire recoil out of any LMG in the game. And I say sustained rate of fires because there are some LMGs in the game that actually have lower first shot recoil allowing you to tap fire the weapons more effectively than you could with the U100. However when it comes to burst fire or simply just holding down the trigger the U100 is pretty much unbeatable in terms of its accuracy, so it's going to make it a much more effective machine gun to fire at range. Complementing this is also a bullet velocity of 650 meters per second, making it the fastest bullet travel time for any LMG. So again, every stat in this gun is just screaming, use this weapon at long range. Close quarters, you're not going to have any benefits whatsoever. And of course, you can drop somebody with this gun in close range. It's not like it's somehow ineffective at range of course you're still accurate but 590 rounds per minute it's pretty much going to put you at the very bottom of the food chain when it comes to really any category of weapons so just about anything you run into in cqb is going to be at the advantage so you want to put yourself at the advantage keep your distance whenever possible now the u100 is an important lmg in bf4 not just because it fills an interesting long range role but because it's actually the default starting lmg in the game and in my opinion this might have not been the best choice all around. It's a tricky gun to use, especially when it doesn't have that firepower in close quarters, and considering how much you're going to need that, especially as a novice player, it is definitely trickier to use. On the other hand, it does kind of force you more into a support role. You're not going to want to be in the front lines taking all the fire and getting into one-on-one -on -one gun battles where you really need to out damage your opponent. You're going to want to be behind your teammates, dropping that ammo, making sure they can always come back and get resupplied if they need to, but putting down that accurate supporting fire and picking off your kills from afar. Now when it comes to outfitting this gun I did try out a bunch of different things because I was curious to see how this gun could perform given different play styles. I did try using the angled foregrip and tap firing it a little bit. It wasn't that effective and there's frankly just a lot better LMGs out there if you're interested in more of a tap fire gameplay. So rather than trying to force this into a tap fire roll by putting an angled foregrip on there and possibly a muzzle break, I just decided to forego that route and really play to its strengths a bit more. I even tried using a vertical foregrip on there to help me with my accuracy while I was on the move because this gun actually has decent accuracy while moving around strafing left and right. But again, if you're engaging people at extreme long ranges, it might be a little bit more important to kind of hold your ground, maintain a stable position, and focus on controlling the bloom of the weapon. And that's why I ultimately went with a stubby foregrip because that just controls the bullet bloom, it gives you more accurate fire for a longer period of time, and that's what you're going to need to drop your opponents at those ranges. As for the barrel attachment, you can be a bit flexible in this department. I certainly think that the flash hider is a great option to go with if you're having trouble with the recoil a little bit, especially trying to get extremely accurate follow-up shots at range. You might even want to consider the muzzle brake if you have no problem with the recoil whatsoever and you think you could actually go for a little bit more accuracy, then throw the heavy barrel on there and it'll maintain a bit better accuracy, but it's going to bump your vertical recoil up just a tiny bit. So you really have three options in my opinion that really make a lot of sense for this gun. Now the optic choice ended up being a lot more important than I thought it was going to be. At first I tried running with a Cobra sight or your average red dot sight and giving it a little two times magnifier flip up sight in case I wanted to engage people at further ranges. I used the flip up sight every now and then, but for the most part I was just using the standard 
standard red dot. And the problem with the standard red dot is that it kind of forced me into a position where I just felt naturally like I needed to be more aggressive to take advantage of my given optics. I had to get in a little bit closer. I was going to be in a fast run and gun play style where I was aiming down sight real quickly in close quarters, getting my kills, and then moving on. The problem is that the gun fires so freaking slow and does so little damage that when I get up close like that, I'm going to lose my gunfights anyway. So I put a four times optic on here, which has really become so much more usable since the scope sway fix, and that basically puts me in a situation where I'm forcing myself to engage people at long range. If I have a four times ACOG, I'm not going to try and get up close to somebody and ADS. I'm going to try and maintain my distance, and it kind of forced my gameplay style, and it actually increased my accuracy at range, and it ended up putting me in a pretty darn powerful position, especially in games that ended up being more of stalemates. A lot of the cover had been destroyed towards the center of the map, so it turned into a lot of long-range sniping and long-range machine gun use. The U100 performed really well with an ACOG. And I personally always find it surprising just how much you can change up your gameplay by physically limiting your ability to perform well in close quarters by putting a long range scope on. Sometimes it changes the way you play completely and you'll end up doing so much better in a round because the close quarter gameplay just isn't really catering too well or there's a lot of people just waiting for you where shotguns are camping in that map and keeping your range ends up really benefiting your play style. As for choosing your medium range optic, I personally prefer the ACOG. I think it has one of the smallest optical housings around it so it kind of obstructs your vision the least compared to some of the other ones out there but by all means just go with whichever one you feel the most comfortable as for your kit setup definitely run an ammo box and drop it often you're going to be using a lot of rounds at range putting down as much fire as possible so you're going to chew through your own ammo and frankly just throwing down ammo boxes frequently is really helpful for your teammates it pops up on the mini map they'll come back they'll rearm you'll get points from it you can generally feel like you're actually helping at your team a bit. As for your second gadget, when I'm not sure what I want to run, I usually go with C4. But if you find yourself running into some really stiff resistance or some good long range sniping resistance or rooftop resistance, then you can always switch it up to a mortar or even a UCAV to try and get rid of some of those dirty campers. Anyway, that pretty much wraps it up for the U100 Mastery video. It was actually pretty fun getting 500 kills with this gun. I was surprised. I wasn't expecting to enjoy it as much as I did. Remember to leave your comments down below letting me know what kind of weapon you would like me to master next. The available guns are listed in the video description. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.